So this is part two of your uh, 2D motion. We just wrapped up with bow tie triangles. Now let's look at what would make something be called an hourglass triangle. So once again, we're still going to be moving either towards the east, north, west, or south. And quadrants one, two, three, four, respectively. Okay, so for hourglass triangles, the ultimate goal is that you're going to develop an hourglass because now you're going to move either north or south first, whereas with bow tie triangles, you moved west or east first. So for the first quadrant, we're first going to move north and then east. Draw in our resultant, place theta between the first vector line drawn here and your resultant line. And then opposite now is going to be the X, and adjacent is now going to be the Y. So in other words, you have a positive Y and a positive X. You want to write them that way, guys, because now we're going to talk about theta being the inverse tan of X over Y instead of Y over X. And how would you call this one? Would you be traveling north of east or east of north? Well, once again, the way you figure that out is which vector was drawn second? You list that one first. So x was drawn second, which would imply the east. So this is called east of north. All right, for the next one, just real quickly here. For the next one then, you wanna go north first, and then you wanna go west, draw in your resultant line, place theta, draw in X, draw in your Y. So for this one, we have a positive Y, but a negative X. And this theta is going to be the inverse tan of opposite of theta. Opposite of theta would be the X. And adjacent theta, whoops, would be your Y. And we are heading, take a stab at it, what do you think? Are we heading north of west or west of north? Check out the vector that was drawn second. That one is written first. So west was drawn second, so you're moving west of north if you're in this quadrant drawing an hourglass triangle. Okay, third quadrant, we're going to go south, and then we're going to go west, draw in our resultant line, place theta, label where y and x are. So for this one, you have a negative y and a negative x. You also have a theta that is going to be the inverse tan of, opposite over adjacent, so that would be x over y. Check out what direction you're heading. Which vector did you draw second? You drew west second, so you're moving west of south. All right, next one here. Go south, go east, resultant, theta, y, and x. So for this one, you have a negative y, a positive x, and your theta is inverse tan of x over y. You are also traveling east, <laughs> I don't know why I wrote south, you are also traveling east of south for this one. Okay? So summing it up, if you draw a boat, sorry, if you draw an hourglass triangle, then you are using the inverse tan of x over y. Whereas, if you were drawing a bow tie triangle on the previous slide, your inverse tan equation would be y over x. So it is imperative that you read the problem slowly, cautiously, carefully, and you draw. So now we're going to do like an I guess image, givens, unknown, equation, substitute, solve. So the image is going to be you drawing the triangles, either the resultant line that they give you or the two vector components, x and y. And which one did you have to draw first? Did you have to draw x first? Bow tie triangles. Did you have to draw y first? Hourglass triangles. Okay, so check this out here. Solve for the resultant magnitude by showing all work. I want to change something real quick, guys. This is C, this is A. Okay, so change those on yours too. B is B. So solving for the resultant magnitude, that implies that you need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So here we have the square root of x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Whereas your 
really looking at a squared plus b squared equals c. Change that. That should just say r. I'm sorry. Okay. So let's plug and chug. Um, you have an a of 1.5 squared and you have a b of 0 0.80 squared. So take out your calculators right now. Please don't just wait for me to jot it down. Take out your calculators. You have 1.5 squared plus 0.8 squared equals square root second answer equals. Get it, get it out now. Okay, please do that. Don't just wait for me to let you know what the answer is. 1.5 squared plus 0.8 squared equals square root second answer equals. Or put it in however you want to put it in. So your calculator answer here should be roughly about 1.7. Looking at your givens, the least number of sig figs is two sig figs. So 1.7 meters per second is your resultant, or C in this case. Box it and move on. Solve for the resultant direction by showing all work. Okay, so this is where this guy's going to come into play here, okay? You're going to have to look at your diagram and ask yourself which... of triangle was drawn. And what I mean by that, is it an hourglass or is it a bow tie? So check it out. Which one do you think that you drew? You went north and then you headed east. So this is an example of an hourglass triangle. Yeah, because ultimately we're going to go east of north. So you really want to use the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. Now check out, where would you guys place theta in this picture? Theta is always between the first vector line drawn and your resultant. So this is where theta is. So opposite theta would be A, adjacent theta would be B. So your equation over here is inverse tan of A over B. Make sure you're in degrees and not radians. So the inverse tan of 1.5 divided by 0 0.80. Put that in your calculator, please. The inverse tan of 1.5 divided by 0.8 equals. Your calculator should show you 61.93, in which you really want to show theta as 62 degrees. And then technically, this question doesn't ask for cardinal directions, but let's practice, okay? So you'd be 62 degrees east of north. I'm going to put that in parentheses because technically it doesn't ask for it, but that would be what theta equals. Okay. Next thing that we want to assess is that vectors can be added in any order. You could move this way first, this way second, this way third, this way fourth, this way fifth, and still end up getting to the same placement as long as direction and magnitude do not change, but you can order them in any direction. Okay. That's it. That's really all I wanted to show there. So let's try this one together. A car travels 105 meters in an eastward direction. After 10 minutes of travel, the car makes a right-hand turn and begins to travel south for a distance of 55 meters. Solve the resultant magnitude and direction. So I guess is really what we want to use here. The first thing you want to do is draw a picture of this scenario. So for this scenario, it shows you that the car is traveling for 105 meters, so displacement 1 is 105 meters in the eastward direction. Okay, so it's a positive 105. And then after 10 minutes of travel, the car makes a right-hand turn and now is traveling due south for 55 meters. So x2 should be a negative 55, right, because you're traveling south. So you want to solve for x sub r, the resultant magnitude, and you also want to solve for theta. And that's going to be in degrees of, I don't know yet, something of something. Either east of north, or north of east, or south of west, or west of south. We'll figure that out with the first thing here, which is our picture. Now the picture that we're going to draw here is, you went 105 east, and you made a due south for 55 more. Draw in your resultant line, place theta, and I like to label them the way that you see them. Now, yeah, guys, that says x2 down there. It's really in the y direction. So if you want to be seriously technical, x sub x1, x sub x2, but whatever. Okay, so then this is going to be your x of r that you'll solve for. So the first thing we want to solve for is our resultant magnitude. 
So that equation would be the square root of x sub 1 squared plus y sub, yeah, y sub 2 squared equaling r. Whereas this is x1, this is y. Just because. I mean, put x squared plus x2 squared, whatever. Okay, just show all work. That's what I'm terribly concerned about. So 105 squared plus a negative 55 squared, and yes, you can take the square root of that because the square root of a negative is positive, is going to give you. So time out, get your calculators out. 105 squared plus 55 squared equals square root second answer equals. Throw that in your calculator, please. You should see a calculator answer of 118. Point fifty three. Looking at your givens, you're not using the 10 minutes, so you really only want two sig figs. So that 8 is going to round the 1 up to 120 meters is x sub r. Okay, theta. Theta is going to equal the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. So in relationship to wherever theta is, you want your opposite over your adjacent. So that would be your x sub 2 over your x sub 1. Make sure you're in degrees, okay? Make sure your calculators are in degrees. So your x sub 2 was a negative 55, and your x sub 1 was a 105. So 55 divided by 105, inverse tan, second answer. Or inverse tan, start your parentheses, negative 55 divided by 105, end your parentheses, enter. Make sure you're in degrees, though, guys. Okay, in your calculators, what do you see? Let me know what the calculator answer is here. Calculator should read 27.64. Two sig figs really gives you a theta of 28 degrees. And then how are you heading? You went south of your eastern line. So there is no need to put a negative 28. That's like doing double duty, right? Negative 28 degrees south of east is the same exact thing as saying 28 degrees south of east. So do not include the negative with the 28 there. Sweet. Hopefully that helps. All right. We're going to do another example here in a minute, and then you're finding a resultant worksheet. You'll do several examples too. Okay. So to subtract vectors, you just want to look at their opposite. So for example, this one right here is showing you a positive 30 degrees. I'm sorry, 30 meters per second. Agreed? So really what you're moving is 30 meters per second east. So this is 30 meters per second what, guys? You would call this 30 meters per second, which direction? Yeah, yeah, you would call this 30 meters per second west. Okay, moving right along. Vector operations, so this should be a review. In other words, instead of giving you x and y coordinates, we are going to give you just the resultant. So how would you then go backwards and solve for x component and y component independently? So what you're going to do is you're going to use Pythagorean theorem, and you're also going to use inverse tan. So just to recap this, the equation that I would like you guys to use is the square root of x squared plus y squared equals r. And then also the equation you're going to use is, I'm going to be more specific and say with a bow tie you're going to use, and with an hourglass you're going to use. Well, both of them you're going to use the inverse tan. And for both of them, it's going to be opposite over adjacent. But either flip back in your notes or test yourself out here real quick. If I were to draw a bow tie triangle and place theta correctly, where would my opposite be? Where would my adjacent be? Would it be x over y or y over x? For a bow tie triangle, it should be y over x. Okay, so draw yourself an hourglass triangle. Your hourglass triangle should be x over y. Nicely done, nicely done. Okay, so those are the two that I want you to kind of memorize there. So um, on the next video, then we're going to get into the practice problems of finding the resultant and then resolving your vectors. All right, that's it for this one. Please move on to video three.